Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have a German whiskey, Aurium 1865, the foundation year of a German distillery. And this is the third of a trilogy of whiskeys from Axel Ritt in cooperation with Aurium. Axel Ritt is um, one of the founding members of Grave Digger a German um, hard rock band. And he was thinking one day, either very, very creatively or very, very unimaginably weirdly about the idea of wood and alcohol. Now, we all know that wood affects alcohol. Duh. That's why we have different casks. We have American oak, we have European oak, we have port, and we have rum. We have different types of woods, different types of effects on the whiskey. Now, he thought about what happens to the wood. Imagine he put the wood into the whiskey, let the wood soak into the whiskey, maybe change the membranes, maybe change the cell structure, and then dry it back out and then make that wood into a musical instrument. A guitar, which was the very first edition, which I unfortunately only had a sample of, but I did do a video of it. That was made out of maple, um, mahogany, mahogany, and also then um, ebony wood, which is really weird. The second one, I do have the bottle still here. I did a video about this as well. Iron Finger. Iron Finger is his personal electric guitar, and that's why it's always striped. And um, they actually gave you a USB stick here with all the information, uh, even music, videos. It's really kind of cool. They did a good job with the packaging as well. These are the standard Aurium bottles, and they all mostly look the same. There is even here a, um, oh, where did I put that? Yes. Um, a so-called Grave Digger Edition in their bottling, and it comes in its own coffin. So let's see if I can show you this picture real quick. Very, very poorly done, but you can actually take a look at this. You see the whiskey in a coffin because it's not grave digger from the monster trucks. It's grave digger from the European um, heavy metal band. And the third one is here for bass, for bass player. Um, that is maple wood and olive wood. So this is whiskey base number 127914. Um, costs about $90. Both of these bottles did. Uh, so we're talking about $110, $115 maybe. A little bit expensive, um, very limited edition. When that one cask was emptied, that was it. I don't know if there was two or 300 or maybe even 400 bottles total, but there were not that many more. Rare and exotic whiskeys. Whiskey Jason here. So um, let's nose it first. Let's try it. I applaud Axel Ritt for his ingenious idea. So he wanted the wood, and we have the byproduct, which is the alcohol, and we get to pay for his experiment. Now, what I'm missing in this experiment, and these bottles have been now on the market for about a half of a year in total. Um, the guitarist was actually over a year ago, is the result. I'm sure within the last year, they built a guitar. They have built a electric guitar, and they hopefully have built a bass guitar by then. Has his experiment been successful? Is there a change in the pitch and the sound and the resonance um, or not? And that would be very, very interesting to know because there should and will not be a third bottle. This was three, this was two, and the guitarist, um, unfortunately, I don't have that, is number one. Fairly sweet, almost bourbony nose. It really, really confused me at the beginning. It's like, do I have like a Elijah Craig in, in the glass? It's really, really bourbony. And I guess that must come from the uh, original, um, it was finished with a ahorn, or ahorn, I'm sorry, that's maple, and it was finished with the olive. I don't know what, was, what, what it was in before that, um, but very smells a lot like a um, first filled bourbon cask. Over here, the um, iron finger, we have the, we have the, um, the swamp ash, yeah, exactly, and the, cast, uh, the, the, um, the chestnut. Swamp ash and chestnut, maple and olive. I prefer the maple and olive in the nose. Let's try them. Mm. Mm. 
Now, it's very, very nice, but then that finish just gets weird. I think they call it the space, I mean, the spring bank funk. I would call it the aurium um, funk here. It's a little bit uh, flowery, as in, no, not roses, but as an actual wheat that's been milled into a flower. F-L-O-U-R. It's a little bit also of um, um, like a starch, exactly. When you're doing your gravy, you can pour in the starch and then you can thicken things. It feels a little bit like that for some reason. It's weird, a little bit weird. That olive wood, I don't, um, I used to be a cabinet maker, joiner, and I've actually worked with a lot with maple, very, very dense, very, very hard wood, hardly at all anything would be soaked up in there. We'd put some stain on some oak, if it'd be red oak or white oak, and just <laughs> soak in there, and with, with a maple, it just stayed on the top, hardly anything happened. I used olive wood ones, I think. I made a jewelry drawer, a dresser, a chest out of it. Let's call it chest, and um, it has about the same density, as I remember correctly, as cedar does, which was fairly light. Um, very A little bit of green type of wood, that olive wood. Um, you don't have big olive trees. It's always a little bit thinner, um, also the pieces of wood that we have. And there were a lot of knots in there. Mm. The swamp ash and the chestnut bitter um that that chestnut i really don't i don't think there's been a single bottling so far where i went oh look chestnut yay it was a method of madness wow that was really up not up my up my, up my alley, even here nose is nice taste bitter a very very strong tannins um it's 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 got a little bit of a as if you're actually eating buttercups you know, that bitterness from those buttercups? It shouldn't do that. But that's what I'm getting at. Um, the, bass, the bass player is actually much better. Mm. But towards that end, there's an, that finish, there's something going on there. It's weird. It's different. It's unusual. It's not for me, actually, something I've ever had before. Why not? All right. So these are one-offs. The guitarist, gone. The um, Iron Finger, gone. The bass, bass player, gone. They've been sold out now. They came on the market, collector's editions and so on. I am doing with my German colleagues over here a battle share, which means um, they actually send me money via PayPal or whatever, and they can get 5 or 10 CL the bottle. I send it to them with the mail, very legal. If you want to do that, and if you have the possibility that you're in... Germany or Europe and you would like to have maybe a sample of this feel free to contact me at whiskeyjason at gmail one word whiskeyjason at gmail.com um, we can work something out there I'm sure if it's legal to do I do have a friend in Austria he's going to take the bottles when they're halfway down but up until that time I get to keep them and so um, very very nice um, value for money uh, D plus taste today it's a three minus that funk at the end is not really mine do i want to give them an extra bonus score for originality yes a plus the idea the concept the whole entire process of putting that wood into those barrels taking that wood out and making actually instant music once with it the having the, the idea itself axel ritt wonderful 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 um and making us or letting us have a taste of the byproduct Thank you. Why not? Oh, yeah. That's a strong, long, dark, dry, astringent moment. Yeah. All right. Good. Whiskey, Jason. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic. Da, da, da. Whiskies. I love doing this. It's amazing how many whiskies I get to try. And my German channel, I do a video every day. I've been doing this now for over two years. And um, every Sunday, it's a 20, uh, 9 p.m. my time, Central European time, is a live stream with a guest. So I'm doing a lot of that. My English channel is only on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And still, I have a backlog log of about 50 videos I'm going to have to be putting up here sometime soon. Um, but I keep on trying rare and exotic whiskey. I call it the curse 
of the German whiskey world, you might call it a blessing. All right, good. Thank you very much. Please comment. Which whiskey would you like to have if you had the chance? Would it be the number one, the maple, the mahogany, and the um, ebony? Would it be number two, the swamp um, um, ash or the with the, with the chestnut? Or would it be number three, the maple and the olive wood? All right, the guitarist with the maple, the mahogany, and the um, ebony, the iron finger with the swamp ash and the chestnut, or the bass bass player with the maple wood and the olive wood. Mm. All right, very very good. I think I think if I remember correctly, the guitarist was the best. I didn't have it to try today to compare, but that's my personal opinion. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe, tell others about this crazy American over here in Europe especially in Germany, tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Bye-bye.